Are you going to just... Oh. Okay, uh, we are on, and I would like to open the Georgetown Planning Board November 18th, 2015 uh, meeting, Memorial Town Hall, third floor conference room. Uh, we're going to uh, pass over the minutes of October 28th, 2015. I'm going to go to correspondence. You want to just touch on that, Howard? Um, no, these are CDS dollar fifty. So. <laughs> I think they're making my eyes worse, though. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we received a letter from Tom Mineta, who is uh, the civil engineer for the Bailey Lane project. I can bring that up during the public hearing, and we received some correspondence from the attorney for Turning Leaf uh, regarding release of lots. And that will be brought up under new business. Okay. So moving to vouchers. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. <clears throat> make a motion to pay the vouchers in the total of $967.20. Second. Motion has been made and it has been seconded to approve the vouchers uh, in the total amount of $967.20. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. The, um, ah, just, um, yep. With respect to the, the, the bill from Gatehouse, was that the one that they messed up? For the, no. That not, that's not it? Are that's we getting billed for that? Not yet. Okay. So let me know when that is. Yeah. All right. No more questions, Mr. Chairman. Uh, any more? No more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, one absent. Um, so we're going to move right to public hearings. Bailey Lane continued from October 28th. Uh, for the review and for the record, the planning office received an email from Tom Mineta. Uh, regarding Bailey Lane, Tom Mineta of Th Thomas Mineta Inc., who served as the engineer for the application on the Bailey Lane OSRD project. Uh, he sent a quick note that due to health reasons, he will no longer be representing Jeff Uda from Symes Associates. Uh, he is meeting with Jeff and Rich Williams. Rich Williams is here tonight. Uh, Williams and Sparagus, uh, LLC. Um, <clears throat> so... Uh, we will be coordinating now with Rich Williams on any civil matters, uh, civil engineering matters for the Bailey Lane OSRD project. Okay. Just a quick question, Mr. Chairman. Just to, um, what are these plans then? Who's stamping them? Uh, well, I'll be stamping the plans. I'm, I'm going to take over the project and um, we'll, you know, be moving forward from here. It'll be be my stamp on the project. I'll have to go back through and um, do some base work so that I can um, be able to stamp them. But Are these new plans? No. They're the same ones we've already seen? There is one new plan. There is one new plan? Yes, sir. So we haven't seen that one yet? Correct. Okay, so we'll take the information and if we have a few base questions, but otherwise we'll... So... Sure. Uh, for the record, Rich Williams with Williams and Sprages. Um, with, with Science Development. Uh, and pardon me if, if I um, you know, go over all the things that you guys have done all of our work or missing things that you guys already know. Um, uh, but, you know, I'll, I'll be up to speed quickly up on through all the material. Philip has a pretty good grasp on the situation here. Um, this is the yield plan, which you guys have obviously seen. Um, when the applicant was here last, there was discussion regarding um, this plan, which is a five lot plan with um, a court providing frontage for two lots and three lots. Um, in the, this is obviously the OSRD, and three lots taking frontage off of Bailey Lane, and um, it was requested to look at um, 
moving this down in this area and uh, Tom had to dip you out and do some perks and came up with a concept plan um, which would um, you know, be able to support the five lots and have have um, park tests and and meet the OSRD requirements. Um, so it would be it would be um, a lane, not a court, because it's five lots, and um, it's it's really not a um, a proposal that that the applicant is. Uh, too excited about I think from my standpoint I think it is not better open space it's probably more chopped up you end up with uh, some area out front and then a long strip and then um, you know a long a long strip uh, again breaking up this back part um, so Know, we're, we're, we're back to thinking that this is from an open space requirement um, a better it better meets the intent and purpose of the OSRD bylaw correct uh, the, and uh, as was stated th this is is new material the planning office hasn't received it but yeah, uh, I'm maybe considering you can like re refresh my memory, Howard, because I, I I'm looking at these and I'm kind of shocked because I thought that we had left the applicant with the idea to move it up uh, and put the five away from the open space so that the open space would be more contiguous and get away from that three lots down off of Bailey Lane. But maybe that was my impression. Maybe what, okay. So, and so as, as, far as, as far as as far as before we start getting to this, oh, um, okay. no, no, that's okay. Uh, it's been so long since we've yeah, we've, it's, we've, it's, we've been you've been here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so w the plan that we just saw is that the new plan? Yes. That's correct. That's, that's that the, is the. I just want to confirm that. Um, that's the, the latest plan, and I, and I apologize. I didn't know that uh, you guys hadn't received it. Uh, I'll send over. Um, I've got to comment sent it, so I apologize. That, that, that's okay. I, yeah, yeah. yeah it, uh, um, it, it send it um, hard send copy and in, in electronic. I also want to add what he is. He is. What he, you know, Tom's a pretty private guy. He said sure. He said it wasn't life threatening, but he had to pull back all his engineering business for right now. Okay. Yeah. Um, so all I was going to say is that um, I feel like it, the project has has it's been so long since it's been in front of us and then we have this new plan that I'd like to just stay in generalities and, and maybe not get into such detail and if there's some basic comments. I, I think this is the point where we were hoping to be the very last time we said goodbye uh, to, to Tom and, and to, come back with some to come back with some things but I was under the impression that we had asked almost to push that up off of it and I, 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 and I think they're, they're, they're trying to see if that works yeah. but they had a lot of test pit digging you're talking up. about taking all of this and moving it up here I, I thought that was what yeah, what I was going to try I, to do I, I don't think because of the uh, the soils out there that that can happen um, no I don't think it was back there Rick it was just that you were going to put it closer to the uh, three what are you calling that a court over there yes it was going to be over there and then the access way to the open space was going to be further down closer to the end of bailey lane yes but i think because rich wasn't here when we dealt with this what you folks were looking for was to get things pushed over here we don't have the soils back here to do that right it wasn't back there though i think it was just moved it over Move over. Just moved it over. Yeah. Like take these but three lots and push them to here? Yeah. I think so. That's how I remember it. 
because there's a there's a uh, old uh, fire lane. I, I, I would path. say so. We so you're hearing you're, you're hearing different planning board members say different things right now. <laughs> no. I, I would I would I would say right. that let's stay with the plan that you've presented. Okay. And if that's the one you're showing as the one you're putting forth, let's okay. start moving. I don't. What I don't want to be doing is saying I want you to go back and do another plan, and we Thank have you. different agreements with different plans and. So the existing the existing car path is right here. That's the existing path. Just to refresh everyone's memory. Okay. What we were doing was relocating the path to here. Right. How is that working to preserve the topography and preserve the natural? I, I, I don't understand moving it. Um, about the idea behind OSRD. Stay away from it. Well, this, this actually does preserve the topography because if you look, we've got some pretty good grades over here. So we push this up. The, 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 the man-made feature of that, that pathway. I understand. The yeah. path, path is getting moved either way. Okay, you cannot do the three lots along here and split it on either side of the path. The path has to move. And Jeff, as I recall, there was some early discussion about that, where that path was not a deeded woodlot road or, or an easement. You know, the legal opinion is absolutely no rights to it. Well, I'd like that, that verified if, if, in fact, we do do that. I'd like that, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Um, that was submitted about five months ago. This is, are we looking at the plan that you like? Is yes. That, okay. Make sure I'm looking. Yeah, because what, what we tried to do, what Tom tried to do, was to try and preserve that path. Mm. Yeah. But this yeah. is a crazy amount of infrastructure, and yeah. you've got all chopped up open space. Why is that little hitch at the end of it? Because you need the uh, reserve area. It's the only place we could get the reserve area. Oh. Terrible soils, though. They're weird. Mm. <laughs> They're weird. So it, it's just. Howard, where, remind me, it's been so long, where are we in the process right now with this? Well, um, they've, they've come back with uh, a, a revised OSRD concept plan yep. that obviously the board hasn't seen. So it, in my opinion, the process is to take that revised, which would be their OSRD plan, their concept plan, and the conventional uh, subdivision plan. And then at the next meeting, I think there can be discussion and agreement made on the preference of the board and the preference of the applicant. Would it be possible to see the conventional one more time? We the, the, yes, uh, on pre the but No, we're in formal application on, but on an OSRD uh, concept plan. Okay. I see your plan. One, two, three, four, five months. So that's a conventional plan. Mm -hmm. At what point in at what point in this process do we get into, in you know and I'm just looking at the bylaw, where we get into identifying the the you know conservation areas and the slopes and those sorts. Well, when when the applicant's able to to present uh, a revised OSRD concept plan, that should be part of their presentation about how the lots not only reflect the the soils and the ability to perk, but also how. It's uh, furthering the goals that, that are outlined in the four-step process. And with regards to, with regards to, um, in the design process, you know, where so you have identifying the conservation areas, um, locating the house sites. Um, there, about are, there are no conservation areas on this okay on this property um, the, house, the houses are located well I think what the conservation areas for example secondary conservation areas include unprotected elements of the natural landscape such as steep slopes 
it's that that it's not conservation areas in concom world. It's right. a different. So, um, and I recall too, Rob, when we started touching on this previously, there's discussion about uh, if it was what was it, natural heritage had some oh yeah o overlay on or something like yeah, that. Yeah, we took care of that. Okay. So, can, can, could we possibly see, for the record, um, the letter that you sent and the response that you sent? Sure, Mike Seacamp to we'll get it for you. Mm -hmm. And the response letter you received from Natural Heritage, please. I don't know that it's a response. I think it's a function. It's the chicken or the egg. So there's nothing prohibitive here, but we have to get a design to send to them. Mm -hmm. So we need the design first. But I've been told. You know, by my, uh, not by Patrick. I always confuse the, confuse the two. I know you think both of them. Um, that it's really not a big issue. Right. We're we're anticipating that uh, there would be a no a no take uh, letter issued, but they can't do that until uh, until they have a site plan to uh, uh, to make that decision on. But I can certainly mm -hmm. want Patrick uh, for, form a letter for you. Would you like that? To, I'm just looking for a copy of the application. I don't think there's an application. You don't have it yet. I don't think you heard what I said. You no, you we can't that. make the application until we know what we're doing. Until we have a site. When you do. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm starting for that. Sure. I'm starting to recall some of the conversations we had last time, and, and I remember one of the um, requirements or requests that I was asking for was to show um, what the wood line would be after the grading associated with these lots would be and I know there were some on the board that was thinking that that was too detailed information but for me what why it's not too detailed and why it's critical now is to see what is disturbed and what's not disturbed is like a fundamental assessment tool of is this really compatible with the environment right. is it, it is on that plan so maybe when it comes back, you can make it so we can see it. I'll, I'll highlight it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, oh, okay. It's, it's showing a street line. And if you could do that on the other one also. Uh, when you say the other one, you're talking about the... The plan that is the... That's they're all combined, yeah. Yeah, okay. The conventional, just to make sure that the, I don't think we'd be able to vote any yield plan. Yeah, no. we voted any yield? Plan? No. Any yield? I don't remember any no. votes. So we, we may not even be looking at five lots, right? So we we need to. Uh, I'm going to check in with Larry Graham to see where he's at, to see if if. Oh yeah, we asked him to look at that. To see where he's at with the Bailey Wing. Okay. All right. So, so we're going to hear from Larry Graham to see where he's at, whether it's five lots or not, um, confirming that. And then um, we're going to take this new information and um, digest it and come to the next hearing uh, with, our, with our questions, whatever they may be, and try to... An anticipate goal. coming to an agreement with the applicant about which of the, if the uh, we concept... We make a recommendation, was, right? Yeah. And then the applicant chooses. Yes. And, and, and all of these, and, and how it, all of these items that are listed in the design process that are supposed to be on the plans, those are supposed to be on the plans now. Is that correct? Or is it after we select one? Uh, I believe that they need to be on the plans after. It was fluid because they were trying to take recommendations of the butters and the board. Yeah. And now that uh, with, with the test bits done and the, where they know they can do the lots, I think that information needs to be on there for the applicant, for the board to be comfortable with, with choosing between the concept or, or the yield in terms of recommendation. So is that clear? When you say all this stuff. Uh, well, I'm just... Which, which section of the I'm on uh, I'm on section 165.51 in the design process. It comes right after the pre-application. It's on. <laughs> <laughs> 
ghosts. Isn't that <laughs> Time the application for special velocity of the spy lodge is required. Demonstration of the following sound process was performed by a certified LA or qualified land planner and considered in determining the layout of post street house lines. Yeah, you're, you're correct. I always saw that as something after when we get to the definitive OSRD. Well, I, I think what's, what's happened because of there's two to choose from. Right, right. It's trying to determine which is the best and. You, and, and needing this information to determine which is the best. I was always of the mind that we look at a conventional and we look at an OSRD mm -hmm. and between those two which we prefer. And if it's just a recommendation, then it's purely the applicant's decision. But we're looking at two OSRDs. Um, yeah. At, at the next meeting you're going to present your, your favorite but concept OSRD and the yield plan. Let's make a recommendation. Hmm. Do, you have, do you have that now? I think I think I think what I'm going to do is put a letter together providing the updated information including the, uh, the stuff that we're talking about here in that section and include the new plan and then in an error form uh, explain why uh, we want to do the our preferred plan and then you guys can can you know yeah. Absorb that information, and we can discuss okay. it at the next meeting. Okay. And can, and can we get that so we'd have that in, in our packets? So we need that by a certain time. Yeah. When's your next meeting? There's one on December 2nd and December 9th. Is that too soon? No. Well, Don't ask him. <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> the problem is we ask you, and then we end up with four continuances, like we just did. Well, that's because, because you're really hopeful and you have the rosy glasses, but he has the, the drawing easel <laughs> and he's a realist. Rich? When do you need them for the December 2nd meeting? December 2nd. Next, uh, <laughs> next Thursday, the 26th. That's impossible. After, after they eat their back there. That's right. Wednesday. Yeah, that, that, that's not going to happen. You come over and <laughs> yeah. have dinner with us. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You're invited. <laughs> on December for the December 9th meeting it's December 3rd for December 9th December 3rd so you'd have to get it in December 3rd otherwise you're moving into January I'll make a motion to uh, continue this to January 13th 9th, 9th uh, 2016 I, I can definitely have it for the 9th meeting okay. definitely How would it go? so that you'd have it to the 3rd absolutely okay yeah. I'll withdraw my motion. How, how is that meeting? On the night? Yeah, I mean in terms of that. Uh, we, we have, um, we re-noticed the, the special permit application for Healthy Farms. Yep. So it's going to be on that date. And then there's going to be... Um, is that the 40R? Or no. is that groundwater? No, it's no. Healthy Farms. That's Healthy Farms. The medical no, I know that, but it's as as regulatory. And then... Um, and then there, there's uh, a Tenney Street subdivision. And then uh, I That's I can't off the top of my head recall what we're doing for amendments, but I believe it, it's either groundwater or something water, else. Maybe yeah. two. Yeah. So it's going to be busy, but it's just going to be, we have to have two meetings in December, and we're not having the 23rd or the 16th. So um, I'm willing to go for that. Do you guys want to do it that day? I think that this would be a short one when we come back, I would imagine, right? We're just going to be picking up. Yeah. Recommending one. Well, it, it all depends really on Larry, I guess. If uh, mm. yeah, the assumption is Larry can yeah. respond mm. too. So the soon as soon as Rich, well, he he's really evaluating the yield. Mm. So, and he received the yield plan a while ago. I just he, he, and then we've lost track of yeah because yeah. there's always been some continuation requests. So there so. should be no problem with Larry getting it to you by the third. Right. Okay. So it's up to the board. We can either schedule it for the uh, ninth. Or going to January, um, I, I'm okay with the ninth. You guys okay with the ninth? Yeah, I would be okay. All right, so can I get a motion? <clears throat> hey, can I just say if we can find out from Larry if on by the third that he's not going to be ready, we could just let the applicant know and mm. Mm. if a date and times for it. Can, can, is it okay if I copy Larry on the stuff that they send you? 
he should already have it if nothing's changed. Larry's only focused. But he's only. His is the yield plan. Pretty simple. Right now, anyway. Frontage area, period. Yeah. His. His doesn't have to go into all the editorial stuff. Oh, his is pretty straightforward. I I concur. Um, there should be no problem with Larry getting that by December 3rd. Right. Um, j just if for some reason, which it's out of our hands, for I some see. reason Larry can't and he doesn't get it to us, we're going to be waiting. We'll have the meeting, but. I've held you guys up two months, so. Hopefully that won't happen. Hopefully that I understand. Happen. I appreciate it. Okay. All right, so could I get the M account shot? M account's full. All set. Yeah, I believe so, yeah. <clears throat> Make a motion to continue the public hearing in Bailey Lane to December 9th, 2015, at 7.15. Second. Second. Motion has been made and it's been seconded to continue the public hearing from Bailey Lane, uh, OSRD, <coughs> to December 9th. Uh, any discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. New business. Turning the lease from Covenant for lots 13 and 18. Good evening. Good evening. The planning board received uh, an email from Jill Mann of Man and Man regarding a request to release two lots at the turning leaf. This would be lot number six and seven uh, to be released. The sixth and seventh lot to be released. Submitted and provided in the packet was a form K and a form J. Was there anything that you wanted to I mean, I can say, give, add at this I point? I can give you an update. We, um, we are waiting for our regulatory agreement to come back for our um, affordable unit on site. And we did um, provide your town council um, with a modified regulatory agreement for the lot that will be owned by the town. And that, I believe, um, is still with your town council. I don't know if it's gone to DHCD, has it? That's 44 Cyril, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and just also to let you know, we will be coming in with a tripartite agreement. Because now, once we hit our eighth lot, we need the tripartite. It's just that we were waiting um, and to have your, your engineer, um, your reviewing engineer, provide us with the final bond. So hopefully that will be validated in the next couple of weeks, and we'll come in with that. Um, I was tr going to try and get it in tonight, but I just couldn't do it. Um, and as you know, under the terms of the approval, we um, are entitled to up to seven lots prior to the tripartite. Um, and the reason why we only had requested five before was because we knew we were selling those five, and we didn't want to, you know, select two when we didn't know what was going to be sold. So there are two lots that are actually going to be sold in, like, December 14th and December 10th. So it's going well. I mean, have you driven, have you driven by and seen? Uh, it's been always with trucks there. I, I go up there maybe on Sunday afternoon, and it's always, you can't get up there. Yeah, they block because, yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, so I, I really, uh, I was just concerned. I don't know. I'm hoping that whoever does buy 18, number 18 lot, will know that there's That's one of the lots that's being sold. Oh, it's already, it's already, it's already sold. That was one of the lots that was sold. Yeah, and they know about the easement and everything. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm assuming so. Of course. Right. <coughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I just no, I'm just quick question is about old Yep, go ahead. Um, 44 Cyril needs to be released as well, doesn't it? Should we do that now? It's an existing, can't do that? it's existing, so it doesn't even need to be released. It's not part of the covenant because it already it was accessed. So your covenant, <coughs> your covenant controls lots that are, that do not have frontage. That's the purpose, so that you put a covenant in place to ensure safe and adequate access. Well, that's the statutory rule. So under that is what the statutory covenant does is the only way you can get it released is if we provide safe and adequate access and then, you know, to, to the extent you don't have enough security, then bond for total completion and, and, and cover. 44 Cyril is actually accessed over Cyril. So, but it's on the covenant. Is, was it included? I didn't think, they were they included? Yes. I don't recall, honest it to God. It says and to uh, existing. Into existing. Okay, I didn't think they were covered by the covenant. They are, so we have to release it. Yeah. That's my point. Just, put, just 
Yeah, I mean, just we will. You know. But I, I thought it just was regarding the law, because that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Well, why don't, why don't Except we? to the extent that yeah. you may have lost your frontage on Cyril now. Yeah, we didn't. That's so new, weird. New frontage is on. Yeah. On. So you, Lisa. You, you'll just look into that. Yeah. Yeah, but we'll get we'll, we'll get we'll get the we're gonna put the bond in place yeah, and that's, and down, that's so down the line. short order. Right. Yeah. Down the line. Cool. All right. Heads up. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. Anybody? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you, yeah. You sorry, need to. Uh, sorry. You just need to make a motion to for the board to sign Form K, which is the partial release of covenant. Uh, regarding lots of plan entitled definitive plan turning leaf prepared by Williams and Sparagis. you can you've got a copy you can just read that it has to be signed by the board and then uh, form J um, you can just authorize that to be signed and I'll fill it out and file it with the town court back from the Two more back. There you go. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I can make a motion to have the uh, board sign the um, Form K partial release of covenant for the definitive plan turning leaf, uh, releasing lots 13 and 18. Do I have a second? Okay. Motion has been made and it's been seconded. Uh, to sign Form K for the partial release of covenant um, in lots 13, numbers 13 and 18. Lots 13 and 18. That's all right. I read it. Down. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. You signed it. I'm going to give you another one, too, so I can let Howard yeah. have an original. Oh, and if you can, not if it's better not uh, to sign it. Red. I, I think she is a notary. You're a notary, notary. Joe. Yeah, you're a notary. Okay. Um, I, I am, but I oh, didn't Rob, my stand. You're, you're going to witness Rob signing yeah. it. Yeah, really but close. It, Rob, you know what? It's better not to sign in red. I thought that was. It's old blue or hat. black. It's it's it, it, because of um, the quality of everything in the world. Yeah, it's better to sign in blue and black, believe it or not. Still. Yeah. I don't know. Red seems angry. It doesn't angry. scan as it doesn't scan as well as usually. I don't know. Maybe the quality is better, and that really is why. Yeah. Doesn't um, copy as well. It doesn't scan as well. All right. Where is this signature going? Notary public. That's well, theirs. That's commission. Cannot, SS. You're both date. signed. Oh, well, you should be top line then. Majority of plan. Okay. Oh, this is the form. Yeah. Form K. Yep. When I remember to bring it, nobody needs it. <laughs> oh, and by the way, uh, Andrea is now a notary. Yay. So, um, oh, great. any action by oh. the board during a meeting that requires a notary, All right. Andrea, um, you just need to finish your paperwork. Right? Yeah. Oh, you, have to go to, you don't have to go to Boston anymore, right? No. Yeah. Oh, my God, it's a notary now. People don't like being a notary. <laughs> but Jill doesn't have to go through the book and everything. I don't have to do yeah. that. I, yeah. You don't either. You're an attorney. Yes. We don't That's have the to. salty's going for. She doesn't want to use a book either. It's, it's, it's. You, the stuff you guys need to make a motion to board, huh? Form J. Form J? Yeah. But that doesn't need to be signed by the board. That can be signed by me. I need to file it with the court first. So need we need a motion to authorize you to sign for the signatures. Form so J. Hold. Second. So, any discussion? Uh, no discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is this it? Nope. This is it? Yep. Uh -huh. Man in man, do you want it? Wow. <laughs> this pen stolen from man in man. A man in man pen. Nobody can take that. <laughs> Thank you very much, and have a wonderful Thanks. Thanksgiving. Happy Thank Turkey Day. Yeah, that's right. And Christmas. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to be back with that tripartite. <laughs> Take care. Thanks again. <laughs> All right. Uh, planning office. Oh, old business, non-planning office.
Uh, I attended as well as some other members of the board, uh, planning board, were at the Saturday uh, morning meeting, uh, November 7th at the Pembroke School to talk about the strategic plan. And uh, I don't know, there's about 40 to 50 people there. So yeah, good tables and comments and, and the Collins Center is working up the high level vision statements that is then going to be picked up by uh, this committee for the strategic plan and then move forward. So it's the start of what's going to be a long and I think beneficial process. Are you on the committee, Howard? No, I'm not a Georgetown resident. I am. Oh. Oh, I can't are. even be a non-voting member. <laughs> so. Did you get notice that uh, for us to be on the committee or requesting us to be on the committee? Because no. they mentioned it at Monday's selectmen's meeting, but I never heard, you know. I think they, the selectmen are, are going through and are making their appointments. Yes. They, well, they, it sounded like Mike had sent something out and yeah. hasn't gotten any very many responses I don't like you. that he said. All, all I know he, he sent he sent out and um, he had sent one to me and I said yes and he had sent it out to others and some responded some didn't and I think Don Cudmore said yes and that's really all I know but there's uh, there is a lot of discussion about where we are with the master plan um, people talking about uh, what can we do to get more non-residential development in town? So there's there's a lot of good opinions. Uh, people don't want the village character to change, but they know that development needs to happen somehow. So there was there I was I was encouraged. There was a lot of um, uh, general. Con I, I think there was a general consensus. To, at least my impression was that that people recognized the downtown needed a shot in the arm, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, you know the 40 are in that overlay district was something that was thought of well but anything. and the other item that was brought up was the uh, form of government as part of uh, this whole process um, that was talked about and uh, so anyways a lot of discussion too about uh, preserving the natural resources it seemed like there was a lot of people that were very environmentally conscious about keeping, you know, protecting our water, protecting, which, which I think every master plan and an open space plan, it seems to be always pretty much the same responses you get. You know, people move here and they want it to stay like it is. <laughs> there were, I mean, we, yeah, and, and 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 also the other side of that, there was a lot of discussion of recognizing that the uh, the uh, tax base needed to be increased and diversified. Yeah. And that that needed to come from business, not not more property tax, and um, uh, that recognition is obviously very important to how the town. Mm. And you know, the it's, town it's, grows it's funny because I, I I was sitting here and I was looking at the conventional plan, and I looked at the OSOD plan, and then I said to myself, "Wow, what a difference in lot area," and I wonder what the difference in the taxes on a conventional lot are versus what there would be for the OSRD lot for the minimized set of area. Not much difference. Not much. It's all... It's, but there is a difference. It isn't much, though, as you would think. Well, I, I guess it would depend on... There's less taxable area, much. right? There's less taxable area, <laughs> foot by foot. Yes, exactly. But, but that's, so that's there is the both hand, those, yeah. but Less taxable area, more preserved open space. Right. Across the board, when you look at it at a lot, it's the, the, the value is the lot. Whether that lot is one acre or one point two acres, that's mm -hmm. right. The, the value is the lot. The value is is what's on the lot, and uh, mm. so when you're looking at the difference in a very minimal difference in square footage for a lot there, right? I, oh, I don't is, think is there I, I any disagree. is there any is there any calculation in that where it takes into account not just what sits on the lot, but that the lot, the context of the lot, is that at all in influence the number? So in so an appraiser is going to look at comparable. So a comparable that is. Um, you know, rural is and, and, and surrounded by nothing is going to be obviously taken into consideration, and they're going to try to find another comparable like that. Right. Um, but from from my standpoint, when I look at two properties, one that has you know slightly more open space behind it, obviously is going to increase the value um, much more than having a slightly larger lot. I, I think the, the when you have borrowed landscape that is protected forever as your yep. butter. That increases the value of those lots. Ah, it increases the appraised value. 
but it doesn't increase the assessed value. And I'm only talking about assessed value. I'm only talking pretty about pretty much the, the same thing. That, yeah. Yeah. Well, right. Um, That's what he does down there, and now he, they're doing it in house. The appraised value. He's doing that. A absolutely, absolutely. But Change. if you recall, if you remember, different times people come in, they want to divide their lot if it's extra large after they <coughs> sell it. Because if they divide it and live there, they have to pay separate taxes for that buildable lot. Mm -hmm. Whereas if they keep it all under one house, they don't have to pay as much taxes. If it's a second buildable lot. Right. Yeah, as, but that's why they but don't. But a, a two acre buildable lot, just the land, is more than a one acre buildable lot. But it doesn't, I have, I have that. Next door to me is two acres and I'm one acre. And it just seems that it, there's not much difference. Percentage, single, single digit percentage points. It's not even, you know, it's not even a hundred bucks. It's not even minute. Mm. Well, one okay. good way to appreciate lot values is through pictometry. Mm. And we happen to get We happen to get a letter from Merrimack Valley about <laughs> pictometry <laughs> and aerial photography. Um, and we need to come up with our budget by the end of December for the FinCon. So uh, for Georgetown to participate in the next <coughs> flyover for um, pictometry, uh, it will be $6,409 but they allow us to pay that over two fiscal years, so this would represent uh, a $3,204.50 wide item over the next two years in the planning board. How would, wouldn't that traditionally be split between the assessor's office and the building inspector's office and the planning office? That was how we used to do it years ago. I, I, I'll look into that because I believe that everybody kicked in some money because right. everybody accessed it. Right. No, if they don't access it, that's a different story. Yeah. But this but is accessible by them, right? Okay. Do we need to authorize signature for this? Uh, well, uh, not yet. Okay. Because um, authorizing me to sign this means we're agreeing to the price. I'll make a motion okay. to authorize <laughs> Alex to, to uh, sign the in, in letter of agreement. In, uh, I'll sign it. That's what the price is going to be, but I'll look into what the other departments are going to kick in for it. And I believe you're right, and I believe they have to ask. Yeah. And I think the FinCon was cognizant enough of that to realize that the monies that needed to be paid for that came into the single budget in the planning department for that reason, just so that there wouldn't be funds coming so from yeah, everywhere. Yeah. I'll make a motion to authorize Howard to sign the, uh, I'm sorry, what's the date on that? Well, the October 27th uh, letter <coughs> from Merrimack Valley Planning Commission regarding uh, the 2016 spring flyover for Petrometer. Second. Second. Motion has been made and it's been seconded to authorize the town planner to sign the October 27, 2015 Merrimack Valley Planning Commission letter for approval of the uh, the flyover imaging, $6,409. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Okay. One absent. Excuse me. Um, schedule updates on zoning amendments for town meeting. In, in what I've given you for the schedule is actually become outdated. So, uh, <laughs> ready again. <laughs> Next meeting on the second, I'm going to have it all set. Wow. So, I, I, so I, yeah. <laughs> All right, that answered my question because I had a question. <laughs> right, right, I went, I'm confused now, on a script. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Andrea's back. It's all going to be smooth. Now. It's because it's smooth. Okay. Okay. Um, now, at healthy farms. the healthy farms at the public hearing, there, there was a concern about noticing uh, a butters in adjoining communities, and we had sent the letter to. Uh, an adjoining town who uses a post office box and um, basically they're stating that they didn't get the proper notice uh, even though the letter was issued by us. So what has happened is the applicant has decided let's just go back to the beginning and make sure everybody gets noticed by, by proper return receipt uh, so there isn't anything to upset things later on. 
That being said, he said, all we're going to do is we're going to refile the same application, but with the proper notice being sent to the other people. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand out at the meeting tonight at the Healthy Farms application that you are going to be hearing on December 9th. And December 9th was the date that the first public hearing was continued to. So you're going to close that public hearing. That was what I was going to ask. Procedurally speaking, we're closing the hearing for the first application. For the first one. And, and we're the new opening one. the second. That's that night, though. Yes, the same night. Okay. And okay. then uh, we can explain it for the record um, and, and state the reasons why. And, and here's the information. So um, we get the application all over again? Has anything changed? Nothing's changed. Why didn't they show up at the site approval? I mean, the site. Uh, he was there, but he, had, he he left. I think right before you arrived. I, I was I was I was afraid because I was confused with the the timing, and I, I I didn't surprise me to hear that he thought it was at nine o'clock. Because I, I I remember asking. I said, "How do they?" I thought we had this originally scheduled for nine, but then we bumped it to nine thirty, and so we missed him. He missed us. We missed them. I was working. I couldn't Miss make Kim. any of those meet any of those site walks. And you had me cut up early. Save <laughs> <laughs> so you the whole you night. You owe me. She was there. <laughs> wow. Cool. She, was there. she was the one of the. She was the I first did, one. I did the healthy. Uh, the uh, okay. and so at the new the at, the, at the new meeting, I'll just reintroduce the information that's been sent to the board. It's it's still been sent to the board. Um, all all the letters, all the letters received, and correspondence, and, and we'll see if town departments mm -hmm. state anything new or different. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, what would we do different next time, Howard, to avoid or to to avoid that that situation? Is there anything we it, could it, have done different? It, uh, I, it's more the comfort of the applicant. The ap applicant believe that uh, they should just do this so they can. Right, and well, but but I mean, so it was, with regards to the abutter saying they weren't notified, is there anything that we could have done or should have done differently? Well, I, I know I, in the future I can send to to the town something, return a receipt to prove that it was done, but that's never been the case before. We've never done that before. No, no, and and I spoke to the planner in that town, and he was going through his book. Of previous ones that he had received, and he received some of them, but didn't receive others. So uh, it's it's the sorting in the post office box of whether or not it goes to the one it was meant to or, or not. Yep. Um, okay. So are we charging them on another application fee? Uh, I'm sure that he will request a waiver. And what if we don't grant it? Do it twice. Let's let's we'll cross that bridge when we get uh, to it. Yeah. All right. What would the planner do in in the, in Raleigh after he gets it? He'll inform the planning board and any other town departments if they have any comments. Well, how does the abutter get notified? What, what abutter? Well, the the people that live in the, the storage company the across storage the street. The storage company got notified. They got notified. Do you have the green card? I will get the green card. Good. But when I sit here and I tell you they were notified, that means they were I mean were the notified. first time, not well, the second. the second time they were. The first time they claimed they weren't. So. But who, who what I'm trying to get at, and I don't What's know, our I proof? Think. You mean what's our proof? Yeah. We, what is we, that? And that's the green cards. That's all we ever right. have. I want to know what, when the planner gets your notification, does he notify the abutters no. in Rowley? Who does? That's what I'm the waiting for. Does. The, the it, it just like when Howard receives a notification from Raleigh that there's a special permit or a ZBA, he lets us know. What do you do with it? I mean, do you look to see if it's there's a butters in Georgetown uh, connected to anybody else's? No, it's not our responsibility. It's the applicant's responsibility. So you don't do anything either with it. You just you know have it. That's it. You know about it. That's when I receive. A notice from an adjoining town that they're doing a development. Mm -hmm. uh, I do not go through and see if there's anybody in Georgetown that's within a certain distance of that application. It's not my responsibility. It's the it's the applicant's it's responsibility. The applicant's responsibility. Which, well, we should, which is which is correct. We should uh, put that in some kind of a procedure 
we still haven't done that, a rules of procedure, because that's not how I interpret the law to be. But if the town does something different than the law, they've got to have a rules of procedure. But, you know, um, and we talked about it on other things, and I think that's what we have to do. That's the applicant's responsibility, basically. No, it doesn't say that in the law. A it's the one and a butters to a butters. It's the one who holds the hearing is responsible. That's how I interpret could, it. Could you could you do this? Could you bring that part of the law you're talking about to a meeting? Sure. And then let's all look at that. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. So here are the applications for everybody to pick up on the way out. I'm sorry, not to beat a dead horse, but who actually pays that? The applicant, the applicant pays for the mailings to go out. When, when a notice is sent out and it's published in the newspaper, the applicant pays for it. Yep. When it's sent out by the planning office, the applicant pays the postage fee. Okay. When it gets sent out by the applicant, the applicant's required to do the green card and they pay for that. Then they provide us with the green cards to show proof of the notice. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving on. Any street? The planning office received an application for a definitive subdivision, uh, well, it's a preliminary <coughs> subdivision application. It says definitive here. Yeah, but it's actually a preliminary. Application for approval of a preliminary plan. It's for uh, so 210 Street. Okay. And 210 Street is right when you are when you're weaving. It's right on the corner. Important to note that it's preliminary. Yeah. And they will be in. Uh, they've been noticed for uh, December second. I mis uh, quoted uh, misstated earlier that it was December 9th, it was December 2nd. Okay. Well, that's good. Then, then, then the 9th, that, that's good. Then the 9th has right one, one less on it. Public hearing December 2nd. No, he's just saying yeah, he, he misstated. Said, mis mis yeah. Yeah. It's December 2nd. Earlier I said it was December 9th. And it's not so December this doesn't need the uh, OSRD and how many lots are there? Um, he, he, it's not, doesn't fall under, it's not a big enough lot size. Under 10 acres? Yeah. Okay. The total acres is 5.21. And it's four proposed lots. Let's go at the in Chapley's house. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. But um, this is this uh, a developer that has got a, a, a well documented and strong preliminary plan so good um, it, it's good to see that there's been a lot of thought put in about um, low-impact development country drainage and how the stormwater is going to be managed even in a preliminary stage so. good. and does he have a purchase yeah. and sale with the estate I believe he has a purchase and sale with the state continuing upon approval of a preliminary plan uh, there's no wetlands CONCOM is, is not going to be involved so. Well, and we'll get into all of this when we. Yep. <laughs> well, that's rare. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, any. Uh, I think there was land left. <laughs> any uh, member or other public reports? Seeing none. Motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Second. And seconded. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. One yeah. missing. Bob Watts. Thank you all.